Hello, everyone, and welcome to NEMO's webinar, Holistic Heritage Assessment Model, Measure the Effects of Museum Activities. My name is Elizabeth, and I work for NEMO. As the network for museums in Europe, our main activities are advocating for museums at the EU level, providing training opportunities, providing a platform for museums to exchange and learn from each other, and helping museums to cooperate across borders. For today's webinar, we are trying something a little different, inviting members of the SOFIA project to describe their holistic heritage impact assessment model with case study examples of a transnational cultural heritage project. We are looking forward to what can be gleaned from their experiences and hope for a fruitful discussion. So please enter any questions that may come up into the chat and we will save them for a Q&A session at the end. The session will be recorded. To further introduce the model and the rest of the expertise here with us today, I am handing over to Professor of Management and Accounting at the University of Roma Tre, Paola De Martini. Floor is yours. Thank you very much. And, and good morning. Um, hello, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, I welcome all the participants, the attendees uh, to the conference. You are so numerous. Um, my name is uh, Paola De Martini, and I bring you greetings from my colleague uh, Michela Marchiori, who is the leader of the Sofia Project Consortium. Um, my role today uh, is to introduce you the speakers of this meeting. They are all researchers of the consortium, and they belong to units located in different countries here in Europe, as you can see from the picture. Um, what is more interesting is that uh, uh, we tried as a consortium to blend, to merge different and complementary competence and expertise. Um, the first speaker of the meeting will be Mauro Baglioni from Roma 3 University. Uh, he's a urban planner, but as uh, uh, the presenter said before, as a Roma 3 unit, we have complementary experience and expertise in management and architecture studies. Um, he will introduce the SOFIA project. Then the second speaker, uh, is Mercedes Giovinazzo, who is the director of InterArts, a not-for-profit private foundation with the international project that support the design of culture policies all around the world. And uh, uh, Mercedes, we talk about the social platform of the consortium, because it's important to say that uh, we are a social platform and uh, the expertise is not uh, arriving from uh, the member of the consortium, but we have a great audience of stakeholders and they are experts, policy makers, practitioners, managers uh, with great expertise in the world of cultural heritage. Uh, then it comes Rida Ar Arif from EduCult. EduCult is an independent European research institute in uh, the field of arts, culture, and uh, Rida, uh, she will talk about uh, uh, the model, model in more detail. Uh, it's interesting to say that uh, we uh, refined and developed the model with uh, an approach which is a kind of participated research approach because we tested and refined the model with uh, um, different case studies. And uh, Elia Vlachu from uh, um, European Museum Academy will show you uh, the experience of one of the most interesting case study of our research project. Um, of course, uh, from uh, uh, the European Museum Academy um, will join us Enric Zipsen, who is the managing director of EMA. And uh, the European Museum Academy is a nonprofit foundation that promotes research on museum at an international level. And he will moderate the debates. 
what is important to say is that uh, um, we have a very different uh, uh, and uh, um, interesting consortium because we have also other units that are um, two university and a research center. We have the National Technical University of Athens and also the Institutes of Art, Design and Technology. Last but not least, the Institute for Development and International Re Relations in Croatia. So uh, I'm very happy and glad to be here. I hope you can uh, enjoy our presentation. And what is really important is that I want to invite you all to attend our final conference, which will be held virtually in Roma 3. You can find information on our website, on the SOFIA project website. And the conference will be held on the 16th and 17th of December. So uh, thank you very much for being so numerous. I leave the floor to uh, the first presenter, who is Mauro Baioni. Thank you very much. My name is Mauro Baioni. I'm going to give you some general information about the project, its background and the, its main results. And then my colleague will um, go into details. OK, first, this starting point is a, an Horizon 2020 call started in uh, 2019. As you can see, the, the call was for a, a social platform on the impact assessment. So some relevant consideration on that. The first, the European Union is looking for a new approach. Second, the, uh, you relies in the assessment as a means to ensure the quality of interventions. And the third fact is that social platform is at the core of the call. Uh, because um, the engagement of the community plays a crucial role and the collaborative approach is uh, relevant uh, uh, as a part of the open method of coordination framework from the European Union. Then, our proposal. Our proposal has some challenging goals. The first is to create an holistic impact assessment model whatever it is, holistic impact assessment model. And then I go and try to explain what it is. Second, to create a platform to gather opinion. And then I give floor to Mercedes Giovinazzo that will point out the relevance of a, of a social platform, uh, of a digital platform to gather people to. And then the third is uh, address the debate try to convey a consensus towards the, the EU action plan. And then this is a, a, a quite relevant point because we are trying to deal with the new approach. And so uh, I have in some way to lower your expectation on practical solution. And I hope I will raise your attention and curiosity on new possibilities. And this was our commitment. Then again, this is the life cycle of the SOFIA project. Hope that the slide uh, will uh, show how many things we, we have done uh, since uh, January 2020 when we started. And as you can see, everything is quite squeezed. And this, this is exactly how it worked out because we did uh, so many things in a short period of time. And the pandemic made it uh, more complicated than we expected uh, just after we started in Rome with the, the kickoff meeting in January. The pandemic uh, locked out uh, every, uh, every one of us in, uh, in his country. And then we, we have to deal with it. So we, we met again in Dublin uh, on September and we were hoping we were out of this nightmare, but it's not the case. And so, and so, if I can say uh, we put, it, uh, put the pandemic under a, a different light, we learn how to bring uh, 
people uh, together, how to build a community without propinquity, without being together, as we are now, from so many different uh, uh, countries, as I, as I say in, uh, in the chat. And uh, this, is our, uh, this is our commitment. Just, uh, uh, just a word to underline uh, on the middle of, of our process, of our, of our path, we, we had the case study analysis. And then after me, uh, Ilya, we present you the Blue Med case, and uh, that was, I, I think, the the, the, ver the stone of our process. Uh, uh, the case study analysis boosted the project, and we learn a lot from uh, from that uh, uh, that experience. And then our approach, uh, we started having some references. We have a, a long paved, uh, well paved road uh, behind us. The first reference is uh, this, uh, this study, a Cultural Heritage Count for Europe, a study of uh, 2015. I think that uh, all of you will probably know is a very well famous uh, research. And uh, what's the, the focus? Uh, the focus is uh, that uh, the, the cultural intervention have impact in so many uh, areas, in different areas, in different sectors. And uh, we can say in, uh, in some way that the quality of intervention uh, lies in the potential of uh, these uh, many, many uh, diverse areas of impact. And we try to make a little step forward, uh, looking especially with a speci a specific attention to the overlapping between uh, this sector. So not only a multi-sectoral uh, assessment, a multi-domain framework, but a cross-domain uh, um, approach, looking at the interdependencies. This is the uh, specific way Sophia approached to, to this thing. Second uh, reference, ECOMOS. Uh, ECOMOS uh, did a, a, a great step forward, not only from protection, no, not only protection, but acting, paying attention to the benefits of, uh, uh, of cultural intervention. And our approach fo is focused on trying to put those principles into practice through assessment. This is why we, uh, we focus uh, the, our work on an assessment model. And the, the second question, that, the second thing that I want to point out is that uh, uh, assessment is not only related to a sort of ex post uh, verify of what has been done, but this is a process that um, has to, due to, to the whole life, of the life cycle of uh, any initiative from the beginning to its conclusion and then to its legacy. This is why it was important to look at impact uh, 8 and 18 uh, on Liverpool, because it's uh, one of the most relevant initiative in this sense. They had assessment uh, from the beginning to the end and then 10 years after the conclusion of the first uh, round of uh, Liverpool as a European capital of culture. And we asked to Beatriz Garcia that was uh, committed in the, in, in, the, in the initiative and then in the research uh, on the initiative to share with us uh, the, their experience. And, she, and, and we learned a, a lot from, uh, from her uh, about what, what does it mean uh, holistic uh, and uh, and what and, and, uh, and what does it mean to assess? Assess is not only uh, taking a measure, and uh, holistic uh, can be explained. Uh, Eric, uh, who will uh, who will take the word uh, in the in the conclusion, uh, warn us uh, always. Holistic is a so ambitious word. Holistic is everything. We have we try to uh, explain in which way we can be holistic. Uh, with a, a consideration of domains of people and time. And this is why our model is a three axis and a three axis model. So in, uh, in few words, let me sum up. New approach means a focus on cross domain interdependencies, 
a focus on assessment as a process and a focus on time and people. People means different needs of promoter, funders, beneficiaries, audience and managers. And time is focusing on key moments, exante ongoing ex post. And we can use the model as a reference for all of this relevant moment. I'm going to conclude. Uh, of course, at the core of the, of the project is the model, and then uh, I give floor to Rita Arife. She will go into, into detail and explain what does it mean, people, domain, and time. Okay. But then we consider Sophia as a step, as a step on, on a path. And then we have to, we, we had in mind from the beginning how to go on after the conclusion of the project. And so we, we did a, a great effort, and I have to, to thanks to all the partners for, the, for their efforts to, to pay so many deliverables and so many outputs in three directions. A toolkit and some reports to try to understand how to implement the model, how to adapt it and to refine it in the following years. A digital platform, we say to spread the voice, to enlarge the debate, to gather the community uh, around the, the assessment. And then beyond the model, uh, as you can imagine, we have to deal with complexity and a model, an assessment model is just a little piece of a, of a complex puzzle. And uh, we and we have to to consider how many other things should be done uh, from the European side, having in mind uh, the open method of co coordination. And so the European Union can do a lot uh, with in the field of policies and in the field of research. And I think that's all. Uh, Okay, the general informations uh, are, are finished and I give the, the words to Mercedes Giovinazzo from uh, Interars and I thank you very much for the attention. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mauro. Thank you so, so much uh, for, for this introduction. Um, Mauro has uh, delved into the HIA of the acronym of SOFIA, uh, the Holistic Impact Assessment Model and I will relate more to the SOP uh, of our acronym, the social platform. This is um, a social platform indeed, uh, a social platform funded within the H2020 um, uh, program, but it is a coordination and support action. And this is uh, something I think that we have to underline. It is about providing measures accompanying measures such as standardization, dissemination, networking, awareness raising, policy making, etc. So we have been, yes, working on the development of the model, but we have also been working on the setting up of this social platform to accompany our work. Now, beware, when we say social platform, we do not mean a social digital platform. We're not talking about anything of uh, those instruments that we all know uh, and which help us to communicate. No, we're talking rather about a community of practice. By that, we mean a group of people that comes together because they have a shared interest, a shared aim, and they want to work together towards that interest, for that interest, excuse me, or towards that aim. It means that they are both providers of knowledge, but also learners, and that they have a shared basis for communication within the community. Everybody is an equal. And Sophia has applied this concept of the community of practice to bring together a group of people, professionals, like those of you that are listening to us today, uh, people in the academia, researchers, professors, um, PhD students, whatever, uh, people that work for museums or cultural organizations, people that are in the public administration remit, and people that are, for instance, in uh, the sector of the international governmental organizations and, for instance, also networks. We have gleaned from their knowledge. Uh, we have 
made them participate in our community of practice, and they have taken up the challenge. As Mauro has said, two years a very, let's say, systematic approach. Time is not, in this case, uh, a benefit for us. It plays against us. So we have had to pull in uh, the members of this community of practice slowly, but systematically, and make them partake actively of everything that we were doing very, very quickly. This means that we, uh, the consortium, has been at the explaining end, but we recognize and acknowledge the extraordinary level of participation of the members of our community of practice who have taken up this challenge of helping us bring forward what Mauro has explained, the holistic impact assessment model, but also the other outputs of the project. Um, this work has been supported, of course, but uh, by, sorry, a, a, digi a collaborative digital platform. We have, of course, worked with uh, digital instruments also. Uh, Mauro has said we met recently in Dublin physically, but had not met previously uh, over almost a year and a half. And therefore, we have heavily relied on a collaborative digital platform that has been our repository of information and documentation archive. Um, we are let's we are very um conscious of the fact, and this is the last element that I would like to put forward that our project is finite in time, but that our task possibly does not end there. Not even possibly, hopefully does not end there. What our community of practice also means, and we're looking towards you to maybe become interested uh, in the work that Sophia has carried out. What our work has meant is putting forward a model, policy recommendations, options for operational programs, but also a research agenda. And we think that the ownership of the model, but also of these other project outputs by our community is what will ensure its legacy in the future. We need that professionals in the sector, in the heritage sector, consider that the holistic impact assessment model is relevant to the work they do, start applying it, start advocating for its interest, for its need, for the sector. And we hope that this is what in political terms uh, will enable us to continue in the future. Because it is, of course, an H2020 funded project. It is about research and innovation. It is about a coordination and support action, but it is above all about providing the sector with a set of tools that might be useful. And there's nothing more important than to own these tools and fight, if you allow me the term, for their relevance and their implementation. One last thing. Let's remember that the project had as its underlying scope the idea that there is a need to engage citizens when we talk about interventions in cultural heritage. Citizens do not have to be disengaged, on the contrary, because otherwise they, I, neither do they uh, own whatever process is being put in place. So the underlying leitmotif of our project is also about empowering citizens to be part of the decision-making processes when it comes to interventions in cultural heritage. And of course, what best uh, than to use a model such as that of Sofia. It is therefore, uh, an issue of political engagement, of empowerment of citizens and professionals. And we hope that uh, webinars such as this help uh, in disseminating the message, if you allow me the term, and that professionals like you that are listening to us want to become engaged in the use of such a model. Thank you very much for your attention and the floor to the next speaker, a partner in the consortium. Thank you very, very much and have a nice day. All right, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. 
um, I will uh, begin by um, telling you that I'm very happy to present the SOFIA uh, model to you today. Um, this holistic heritage impact assessment model has come into being after a very intensive and collaborative process. And we have arrived at a model finally that we as a consortium are very proud to um, present to you today. Um, all right. So the model aims at contributing to the reflection on impact assessments and quality of interventions in the European um, historic environment and cultural heritage. It facilitates a more in-depth analysis on what impacts have been produced and how and for whom and with what externalities. Um, the initial um, literature review that was conducted um, showed that sustainability and resilience are overarching concepts uh, that should be considered um, in assessing the impact of interventions in cultural heritage, um, requiring a multi-time and multi-dimensional um, frame analysis as part of the assessment. Um, and there is growing consensus in the field now that cultural heritage can support uh, sustainable development in many different ways and across various um, dimensions. Um, but in order to do that and not only be sustainable itself, um, interventions also need to have the capability to absorb disturbances and change. So they need to be resilient. Um, so in the SOFIA model, these two concepts uh, really lie at the heart of the assessment process. Um, they highlight the role that cultural heritage can play in um, the interconnected uh, world of today and justify the need for a holistic uh, heritage impact assessment model in the first place. Um, this also means that the model uh, not only highlights the various dimensions and forms of impact that cultural heritage interventions could have, but it also um, it's putting emphasis on the necessity of understanding um, these multiple dimensions and their connections with each other. Um, the multiple areas of uh, impact and their interconnectedness are the main structure of assessing cultural heritage as part of our model. Um, but these are accompanied by two other important aspects, the time factor and the human factor. Um, these are essential because the contribution of cultural heritage to sustainable development and its resilience to change um, will always depend on the perspective one is taking and the point in time at which the assessment is, um, is taking place. Um, the first one that I will talk about is the people's access uh, that aims to give a voice to the stakeholders that are part of the assessment process. Uh, this includes everyone, including those that are um, engaged in decision making. And it also takes into account the needs and perceptions of the stakeholders. This is achieved through the inclusion um, uh, of the people's perspective in the multi-domain grid, which uh, we will move to in a minute. Uh, the consortium also recognizes the important role that time plays in the assessment, which is why the time access is included over here. Uh, it takes into account at what stage of the intervention the assessment is taking place, whether it is um, ex ante, during, or ex post, uh, ex post, as the goal behind the assessment would um, vary accordingly. And then finally, we have the multi-domain access, which represents six themes that need to be considered uh, when assessing a cultural heritage intervention. Um, the themes that um, uh, are derived as part of this are identity of place, protection, work and prosperity, quality of life, social capital and governance, and education, creativity, and innovation. Um, these six themes have been identified um, during the course of the project's research and um, really form the core areas of impact. Um, these are further expanded into 28 sub-themes, um, four to five per, um, uh, per theme, um, through which the user of the model can explore these areas of impact in more um, depth. We will look at uh, three of these sub-themes in a minute because of a shortage of time today. But before we do that, there's a few elements to note here which are common among um, all the sub-themes in the grid. Um, the sub-theme consists of a short description, firstly, and notes specific issues that are being addressed. Um, through that sub theme. Um, it also includes indicators, which are, uh, you know, which is quantitative information as well as qualita qualitative information, which is explored 
um, in further detail in the people's perspective, actually, which gives a voice to those stakeholders. This is something that are the people's access, which I mentioned earlier on. Um, the interconnectedness between the themes is highlighted through cross-cutting issues. Um, so these are themes that are linked to the sub-theme in question. Um, and it also has counter effects. Uh, so these are aspects of an intervention which would counter the impact of the sub-theme in question. Um, so these three axes, uh, coupled with the cross-cutting issues and um, in uh, many times the counter effects as well, um, this is what essentially captures the holistic nature of the model. And I'd like to show you some examples now of what I mean. Um, all right. So we'll begin by looking at the protection uh, theme, which is largely looking at protection of the environment from natural and human related risks. It recognizes the importance of strategizing against environmental disasters, as well as against um, slower um, shifts that can develop over time into irreversible uh, damage. Um, it also considers the human related factors that burden existing imbalances and they create additional ones as well. So we're looking within this at the green management and development sub theme. Um, in order for interventions to fulfill their role as an enabler for environmental sustainability, it's important that a move towards their sustainable management is um, encouraged and enabled. Um, so this sub theme explores the efficiency of um, various levels of management related um, to the particular intervention, and uh, that's responsible for its economic as well as environmental um, sustainability. Uh, possible quantitative in indicators here include the number of and percentage of funding for projects promoting green, circular, or local economic practices, or for example, the number of agreements with local um, partners for sourcing tangible or other resources. Um, and then the people's perspective that I mentioned is incorporated here through a list of questions, such as the level of people's willingness to engage in green, uh, greener economic practices, um, quality of life, here, um, which is one of the sub, uh, one of the themes, it becomes a cross-cutting issue because sustainable practices through the intervention would have a direct impact on the living conditions of people. Um, on the other hand, work and prosperity is a counter effect uh, because green practices at or related to an intervention could affect um, employment opportunities and um, people's uh, spending behavior. The next um, uh, theme that we look at is education, creativity, and innovation. Um, the overall question of uh, what people learn from and within the context of cultural heritage, uh, both material and immaterial, um, is a very complex and manifold question, and it needs to be divided into several sub-issues. Um, and that's what this theme uh, uh, addresses. Uh, within this, we are looking at the sub-theme of education, which is developed to recognize the potential of cultural heritage to play a role in the education of audiences, but also provide learning opportunities through both formal and informal means. Um, the sub-theme explores the, this diversity, not only in terms of the educational offer, um, the outreach activities planned and you know, the learning opportunities, but also in terms of the target groups and the narratives that are being explored through these planned uh, activities. Um, in order to analyze whether the educational role is being fulfilled, um, analysis of its demographic targeting is needed and it's explored through the quantitative indicators that you see over here under this sub theme. Um, the people's perspective examines this in a bit more detail. It asks important questions about the accessibility of educational material and outreach activities in terms of languages, um, age groups, um, groups of society. Um, the quality of these offers is assessed through exploration of the skills that are being imparted and the level of critical analysis that they are encouraging. Um, enhanced um, educational opportunities is cross-cutting towards many other SOFIA themes. Um, it could co um, contribute positively to work and prosperity by providing training and employment prospects. Um, diversity in the demographic groups being targeted provides a possibility to promote 
and practice in inclusive access through the intervention. Uh, and so it contributes to social capital and governance and an inclusive identity of place. Um, note that there is no counter effect of education here. And I want to just take a minute to speak about how the model is designed to be used in a way that allows for a lot of flexibility in its application. And all the points that I've mentioned here, such as the questions in the people's perspective, as well as the quantitative indicators, these are to serve as guiding questions with room for these indicators to be expanded upon as and when needed. Uh, we will quickly look at um, one last sub-theme. Um, I'll talk about the quality of life theme now. Um, uh, the third uh, theme as part of our model. Um, on a very basic level, an intervention can improve the quality of life by providing employment, either directly or indirectly. Um, but more um, significantly, it can provide opportunities for social connections. It can give meaning to natural and built uh, to our natural and built environment, and it can provide connections to our past and our ancestors. Um, on the other hand, uh, cultural heritage interventions that overemphasize the short-term economic benefits um, deriving from, for example, tourism, can severely impact the quality of life of, um, of the local resident. So these can include issues such as uh, you know, increased noise pollution, traffic, uh, security and safety concerns, and gentrification is a big problem as well. Um, and these themes explore, this theme explores this and other factors as well, including living conditions, which is the sub theme that we are looking at over here. Um, the management of and all the activities surrounding the intervention may result in economic and um, social effects, including changing uh, people's income levels and the availability of and access to services such as um, waste collection, transport, um, shops, even recreational facilities such as you know, parks and public spaces. Um, so the people's perspective is um, important here to understand the social impacts um, and look and so it looks for data that reflects their impressions regarding their well-being in relation to the intervention under assessment, um, both short term and long term. So bringing in the time factor here. Um, uh, while an important quantitative indicator is the cost of living during or and, you know after the intervention um, or before the intervention, and this can give an overview of its economic impact uh, on the surrounding community. Um, now, work and prosperity and social capital and governance um, form cross-cutting issues here because healthy economic activities related to the intervention may lead to enhanced um, living conditions and social cohesion. Um, having a similar effect on a community could be the improved um, offer of educational activities. Um, so education, creativity, and innovation here becomes another cross-cutting issue. Um, and although you know, increased uh, tourism activity would generate economic activity, uh, it would also need to be monitored to ensure that over-tourism and gentrification does not take place. Um, changes in social and living conditions would also impact the identity of place which um, together with work and prosperity and um, protection uh, become counter effects for this sub theme um, so to conclude the sophia model can be considered to be a conceptual model um, with the ambition to inspire its application while not prescribing any recipes um, the model it's not ready for use as is, but it's designed for maximum flexibility in tailoring the assessment while considering some contextual factors that are unique to each individual case. Um, these include contextual factors related to the intervention. So this would include politics and history of the intervention, the relationship with the stakeholders, the social context. Um, it also considers um, the context of the assessment process itself. Um, this would include questions of the, um, the reasons or the motivation behind an assessment, what particular criteria are under consideration, the resources that are available to conduct the process, and so on. Um, I will conclude here, and we can hand over to Elia from European Museums Academy now. Thank you, everyone.
I am uh, Elia Vlaho, I'm a museologist, uh, and I'm going to present one of the 12 case studies that uh, have been selected in order to assess uh, the uh, SOFIA draft uh, model. Uh, my case study was uh, the Interreg Mediterranean project, Blue Med, Plant Test Coordinate Underwater Museums, Diving Parks and Knowledge Awareness Centers. Uh, a project involving 14 um, uh, partners from five Mediterranean countries and aiming to open up to the public seven underwater museums and four knowledge awareness centers. The project uh, aims to develop a multidisciplinary approach to promote innovation in the diving industry, to attract people who choose diving tourism, to introduce the wider public to underwater natural and cultural heritage, and to set up an underwater natural and cultural uh, routes in the Mediterranean. The main interest uh, of uh, Blue Med in relation to Sofia was uh, its uh, multifaceted uh, holistic approach. Uh, Blue Med takes into consideration various cultural, environmental, socioeconomic parameters also included in the Sofia model. So, uh, Sofia met uh, Blue Med uh, through a series uh, of uh, meetings, uh, focus group discussions, uh, interviews, and uh, visitor and stakeholder uh, surveys. And uh, finally, the conclusions uh, were presented uh, in uh, an international conference uh, held online uh, in uh, May uh, 21. Uh, <clears throat> We approached uh, the uh, Blue Med uh, project uh, following uh, the three axes uh, with the objective not uh, to evaluate uh, Blue Med per se, uh, but to assess uh, the model as to its relevance uh, and applicability uh, in, uh, against a real uh, finished uh, EU-funded project. Uh, to this purpose, uh, we created a very simple matrix, uh, including uh, two parameters, uh, relevance, high, medium, low, or no relevance, uh, measuring uh, how relevant uh, is uh, each uh, criterion proposed by the SOFIA model for this particular case, and uh, applicability or application, uh, measuring uh, if uh, the relevant uh, criterion can or has already been applied, and if so, at which stage of the project uh, it was uh, first applied. Uh, for this uh, reason, uh, the second category offered also an insight to the time perspective uh, of the holistic impact uh, model. Uh, so we will now present some examples uh, of uh, from each category, starting with the social capital and the governance. One of the most important aspects of Blue Med is that it gave access uh, to cultural heritage sites till then uh, inaccessible uh, to the wider public in uh, two ways. Uh, by opening up for the first time to the public of divers underwater archaeological sites and by implementing knowledge and awareness centers, allowing non-divers and the people with disabilities uh, to drive visit uh, the underwater museums. Our second domain is uh, identity of place. The project aimed at increasing uh, the visibility and the reputation of the selected case studies. Uh, as uh, it's the first time uh, that these sites open up to visitors, media coverage was huge and the trend should be easy to assess. It is also interesting to note that the project has already won several awards and best practice recognitions. Uh, here is an example uh, of uh, no direct relevance to the project, uh, peace and uh, safety. Uh, on the other hand, in the field of innovation, uh, Blue Med produced innovative ICT tools uh, for uh, the diving industry, as well as uh, interesting ICT applications uh, for uh, the knowledge and awareness centers and the virtual museum. 
Moreover, within the framework of the project, many of the findings uh, of uh, the underwater archaeological sites have been digitized, while the ICT tools at the service of underwater archaeology and monitoring of uh, the heritage are constantly uh, evolving. Uh, work and prosperity. Uh, local communities uh, depend heavily on tourism. Thus, the project could have a serious impact on the tourism economy. So, the relevant indicators of the model could be used in order to assess a possible impact in the future. Uh, in the domain of uh, protection, Blue Med has uh, developed uh, innovative tools in order to monitor and protect uh, the underwater sites against uh, all human-related uh, risks. As uh, for uh, the people perspective, uh, Blue Med Consortium adopted from the beginning a multi-stakeholder approach. Apart from the project's 14 partners, including national, regional and local authorities, universities, private ICT companies and specialized diving centers, the following target groups have been identified. Overall, the model has been assessed as interesting and useful. All six domains were considered as relevant. As for the sub-themes, 17 have been assessed as highly relevant, 7 medium and only 4 irrelevant. Uh, all stakeholders uh, have found uh, the uh, model interesting uh, to use uh, and uh, uh, thinking that the final version should offer different versatile modules easy to adapt by each stakeholder. Also, main stakeholders are interested in the time marks in order to plan future projects building upon BlueMed. In conclusion, using the holistic impact assessment model against a real case study has proved to be a very useful exercise for assessing the strengths, weaknesses and opportunities offered by the model. The remarks from the various case studies have been gathered and processed in order to refine the model that you have seen during Rifa's presentation uh, and uh, give it uh, the form uh, that uh, we are going to use in the future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much to all of our speakers. Um, I mean, we got quite Self and um, some interesting examples brought forward. Um, Henrik, so so happy to be sharing the stage with you now. Um, to, Thank you. Yeah, to continue the discussion, bring in some questions from the chat. Um, what do you think about also bringing our speakers on stage in case there are direct questions for them? Absolutely, that's most welcome. Absolutely. Excellent. So, um, if our speakers would like to turn on their cameras and mics. Um, and I will get around to enabling you if uh, that's not yet possible. <laughs> Excellent. OK, so um, while this is in process, though, I actually had um, a question, if, uh, if you all don't mind, if I start with a question of my own. <laughs> um, Rita, thank you so much for uh, your presentation, going into depth with um, you know, some of these themes. And uh, I was wondering, actually, and of course, this is, um, you know, anyone can also jump in, but it was inspired by your contribution, Rita. Um, I, I just noticed um, these six themes that you're presenting. Immediately, I had to think of the 2030 SDGs. And I was wondering what, if any, um, inspiration or blueprint this may have provided either for one specific theme or all of them, you know, collectively, cohesively. Yeah. Um, and then secondarily, if you think that, um, you know, for museums that are looking to um, adhere to the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, is your model um, a good approach to reaching that individually? Absolutely. Thank you for that question. Um, the SDGs were um, a huge part of our research and consideration when developing the model, uh, especially for uh, the UNESCO uh, 2030, uh, you know, agenda for culture. Um, so yes, um, 
the SDGs, if you know, for those who are familiar with the SDGs, we'll see a reflection of them in our in our model, in our themes, in especially in our sub themes, and the way that we develop the indicators, uh, especially the people's perspective and the quantitative as well. Um, and I cannot pinpoint to one or the other and say that we considered it more here than there. Um, they definitely um, feature throughout the model. Um, the SDGs are also um, a big point of reference in the um you know in the uh in the two, d 2.3 the deliverable where the model is now available online so you can see that uh reference to them over there as well um when it comes to um you know uh museums using the model to achieve the sdgs absolutely um again because they feature so much in the indicators um and the model itself is designed we're still uh, we're about to um uh, you know release the toolkit which really gives practical information on how to use this uh, model and the flexibility that i talked about so how do you actually do that um so that is coming up in a couple of weeks um but museums um projects within museums maybe for example if you're talking about an exhibition let's say that a museum has organized um this model can certainly be used at different stages of that intervention within the context of museums um i don't know if henrik has um something to add over here about museums and the use of the model well yes i um thank thank you for the word um, um i would say that um Maybe our presentation from Rita and from from uh, from Elia, the concrete project presentation, gives an impression that this is very very complex. It is complex. Let's be fair and honest about that. But it can be used on huge projects with a political angle. But it can also be used on very practical and much smaller projects. But you have to select, of course, the perspectives you bring in. To be active in each uh, on on a re 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 realistic level, and we also have to say that a project like the Blue Med, well, these twelve projects we went through uh, and, and uh, analytically, we assessed them through four or five months. Um, I know very few projects, and very very few uh, museums who have four or five months to evaluate or assess the impact of of a specific uh, exhibition. Uh, um, I, that, that's how very, very few uh, museums in Europe or worldwide who can afford that. So we have to be realistic in that the model can be used on a very high level and very complex level, but also on a very concrete and very small project level. Absolutely. That's great. And I love your honesty there about, you know, let's let's be realistic about the complexity of this, because um, I'm always a bit suspicious when someone has a complex problem and gives a simplistic answer. <laughs> so that's I appreciate that. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering, I, I think it's really interesting, too, as well, when you mention, you know, being able to apply this to, you know, a large institution that has the time or even a smaller project within an institution. It sounds extremely flexible. Um, on on the website, when you're reviewing the model itself, um, it does are, are there also tips um, as to how to, you know, um, apply this model to either uh, larger undertakings or smaller? Or is it relatively intuitively, you know, something that you can adjust for the size of the project? Well, I, I think that if you if you look through the um, the twelfth. Uh, um uh, cases the, the study cases we used they were very they were very different there, there were very concrete uh, museum projects and there were larger projects on eu level and there were projects which were should we say urban development project uh, so they were uh, they, they differed a lot and the, you can be inspired from see how it was used um, and of course when, when we talk to one another about the different cases we also of course observe that in some in some assessments in, in specific projects you can go very very deep uh, in some of some of the uh, the aspects some of the perspectives we, we use and in other projects you can go uh, it, it was uh, about uh, other areas where you can go deep so so it, it, um, uh, the nature of each project or in, or each intervention in, in cultural heritage will dis, will inspire you to decide the, what, what what can you use from from the uh, uh, Sophia model. Absolutely. Excellent. Um, so 
I would like to uh, invite anyone else in the chat if they'd like to contribute um, some more questions here. Um, although I, I know that uh, we did have a question from Margarita a bit earlier um, asking uh, during one of the presentations whether parts of this model could perhaps be used to test ideas while preparing for an application. So, you know, relatively in advance to, um, you know, implementing the project, but actually in these earlier stages, is that something that um, you would recommend? I think that um, it was uh, Mauro who mentioned that uh, the our, our ambition has been that the model can be used very early when you plan a project and uh, throughout the project and when the project is over and that when you saw the uh, the, the interesting and uh, very fascinating work with the uh, Liverpool as cultural capital 10 years after you can look back on, on it and see see the, 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 the long-term effects so you can use it both in planning and and, and, and afterwards, uh, um, there is actually now a project in uh, northern Sweden where uh, colleagues, uh, archaeologi uh, archaeological colleagues, uh, are, are looking at um, how to plan excavations by using this model. Uh, this would be a very interesting and, and hopefully a positive planning tool for the uh, local authorities and the museums when working together on planning uh, excavations. So we'll see how that's right. We'll know, we'll know next summer. Yeah, certainly. I mean, and, and that also sounds very interesting because I, I mean, I would assume this is not their first excavation project. So perhaps seeing the difference of, you know, using this model ahead of time um, versus in the past, having not really being able to see the, the results and the deliverables of that. I think that's really interesting. Exactly. And that's, 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 that's part of the process, which I think Mercedes also mentioned when talking about the, the social platform. Um, this is an, a never-ending process, this model. This model will have to be developed uh, uh, further in the coming years. That is why it is so important that people who are interested in, in assessment modeling uh, and uh, how, how to use them and implement them in concrete projects uh, share their ideas and their experiences with one another. That is what we invite to. That is very important because um, we were first inspired um, from the ICOMAS document, a document from the Council of Europe and the European Commission from 2015 and, and 2020. But there will be new political ideas and new political aspirations in the coming 10 years. So if this model should survive and be uh, uh, relevant in the coming years, we, 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 we who work with this uh, needs, needs to stick together and inspire one another and share uh, our experiences, absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, as a network for European museums, uh, we cannot agree more that um, transparency and sharing our experiences and our learnings and our mistakes and our challenges, um, I, this is this is so important. This is how we grow as a sector. This is how we continue to do better and continue to reach our very big goals. <laughs> um, yes, so with that, um, I think I would offer the floor um, for any any final contributions from the speaker, um, from the speakers, uh, before we go ahead and close for the day? And... Maybe, maybe Paula should mention once again our conference in Rome, please. Okay. Yes, of course. This was my last idea, and uh, I really thank you. It was a very exciting day for us. A very uh, important audience, uh, and so we all. A wait for you at the last conference uh, of the Sofia project and please have a look on our website uh, so you can arrive to the last conference with a lot of questions and answers we hope to provide you. Uh, today are the 16th of December so in the afternoon. It's a kind of pre-conference with uh, new trends on uh, the cultural heritage uh, field. And then on the 17th, uh, we have uh, uh, presentation and debate and of course, uh, many stakeholders will participate to our debate uh, on the Sofia uh, project uh, uh, model. So we we hope to have a kind of long discussion with you. And I totally agree with uh, Henrik uh, saying that this is a kind of dynamic uh, uh, model and we need to refine it, to test it, to deploy it uh, with your help. 
And uh, of course, we are also interested in knowing if there are culture organizations interested in uh, uh, experimenting using uh, 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 our model. So please contact us, and we are very keen to work on it, to proceed on our research. We wanted our uh, common efforts. Uh, we are talking about the collective efforts of uh, many, many experts in the field could be spread and could be have some good result, good impacts. That's the new words, impacts. Not only talking, <laughs> blah, 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 but results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. From yes, the leader, you. from the leader of the consortium, Michela Marchiori, who delegated me. I'm only one of the member of the Roma 3 team. I want to underline that. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much um, to all the speakers here. Thank you to um, the Sofia Consortium in general. Um, it was really a pleasure to hear so much about your impact model and wishing you the best with your with your upcoming conference. Should be, should be thank, you, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.